Hello and welcome back to another tutorial on Unreal Engine. This will be a short tutorial on how to spawn an actor and make it follow a path using a spline component. This is a continuation of my last tutorial, so if you haven't seen it yet, you should go watch that so you are up to speed with what is happening in this scene. As you can see, I have changed the layout a little from the last video so that it resembles more with a river that has some rocks in it. Let's clean it up a little and move the actors out of it. Now. I'd like to have some food spawning from the left of the scene and move along the river, and the best solution I've come up with is to have a spawner class with a spline component and the food to move along the spline. When it reaches the end of the spline should respawn at the top. So let's get to it. In our fish AI folder, create a new blueprint class of type actor, name it BP underscore food spawner and open it. From the components list on the left, click on the Add button and search for Spline. Click on the Spline component so it gets added to the component tree. This is the only component that we need for this blueprint. Compile and save your blueprint. Now, in the Event Graph window, add a new function that will handle the spawning of the actor we want to move along the spline. In my case, I'll call it Spawn Food, but you can call it whatever makes sense to your game. Drag from the Execution pin and search for Spawn Actor from Class. In the Class field, search for the class of the actor you want to spawn, BP underscore Food in my case. Right-click on Spawn Transform node and select Split Struct Pin. This will split the pin into Location, Rotation, and Scale Input pins. Now, drag the Spline component inside the Graph window. From it, drag and search for Get World Location node. Connect the Location Output pin to the Location pin from the Spawn node. Compile and save your blueprint. Back in the Event Graph window, drag from the Delta Seconds pin of the Event Tick node and search for Multiply. Promote to variable the second pin of the multiply and name the variable speed. From the result, drag and search for add node. Promote to variable the second pin of the node and call it distance. Grab the distance variable and place it over the execution pin of the event tick. This will create a set variable node. Connect the result of our operations to the set distance node. Compile and save your blueprint. Now, we need a reference to the actor we spawn in the spawn food function, so let's create it. Back in the spawn food function, Drag from the result pin and select promote to variable. I'll name it food actor. Now that we have the reference, we can go back in the event graph window and use it. Get the food actor from the variables panel. From it, drag and search for his valid node. Let's check if the food actor is valid before using it. Now, get the spline component. From it, search for get transform at distance along the spline. From the left panel, drag the distance variable over the distance input pin of the spline transform node.
From the is valid pin, drag and search for set actor relative transform. Drag the food actor from the left panel and over the target pin. Now, right click on the new relative transform pin and select split struck pin. Do the same to the output pin of the get transform node. Connect the location and scale pins from the get transform at distance along the spline node to the corresponding pins from the set actor relative transform node. After a bit of thought, I decided to move the is valid node before the set distance node. This way, if the food actor is not set, we won't do any calculations as we don't need them. Now, get the distance variable and the spline component. I will test to see if the distance is greater than the spline length, and if it is, then we can destroy the food actor, reset, and spawn another one at the start of the spline. From the distance node, drag and search for nearly equal function and set a tolerance of 0.5. From the spline component, drag and search for get spline length. Connect the output to the B input of the comparison node. From the exec pin, drag and search for branch. Connect the result of the comparison to the branch node. On the true branch, drag and search for destroy actor node, then drag the food actor variable from the left panel over the target pin. Now, drag and search for the name of the function that spawns the actor that we created at the beginning of the video, spawn food in my case. Compile and save your blueprint. Now let's see if it works. So, let's drag the blueprint to the scene and create a path with the spline that we added inside the blueprint. To create new spline points, Click one of the spline points and drag with your mouse while holding down the ALT key. Okay, this should be fine. I just want to make sure that the spline is above the ground so that the food doesn't clip into the ground or do anything funny. I'll remove all the food actors I have left in the scene, since I don't need them anymore. 
I'll move this test pawn also. This is an actor that helps you test, adjust, and debug environmental queries. I used it to create another tutorial about using AI to find hiding places around an actor. That will come out soon, so subscribe and hit the notification bell icon to be notified when that tutorial comes out. Now, let's hit play and see what's happening. I'm using simulation mode so I can maintain a bird's eye view over the scene. And, as you can see, nothing's happening. This is mainly because I forgot to call the spawn food function on the begin play event. So, from the begin event, let's call the spawn food function. This should start the spawn respawn cycle for our spawner. After a few more failed attempts I realized that I forgot to set the speed variable to something greater than zero and the food spawn but didn't move. On top of that, I had to change the space coordinates to world for the git transform at spline point by distance node. I will set the speed variable to 100 for now. Making it public will allow you to adjust it on each instance. I'll make it public later on. Here, the actor moves in the wrong direction because it takes the values in local space instead of world space. This can be easily fixed by setting the space coordinates to world space and the get transformed by distance along spline node. If you don't simulate physics for your actor then you don't have to set the teleport option to true as it won't have any effect, but if you have physics enabled for your actor then setting teleport to true will make it move along the spline more smoothly. Now we can see that the actor follows the path I created in the scene. Let's see if the food gets respawned once it reaches the end of the spline. and it doesn't. After fiddling with it for a bit, I found out that the nearly equal node doesn't get triggered and I changed it for greater equal node. So let's replace the node with a greater equal node and reset the value of the distance variable to zero when it reaches the end of the spline. Now, the actor should be destroyed and respawned at the beginning of the spline.
I'll also make the speed variable public, so I can change it more easily, and I will increase it a little just for testing purposes. Now, the food was eaten by a fish and didn't respawn. Another food piece appeared on the map because of the logic we implemented last time in the fish blueprint. I will remove that later, but first, let's see what can be done in case the food is eaten before it reaches the end of the spline. I would like that another piece of food will respawn when that happens. Back in the event graph, if the food actor is invalid, we can reset the distance variable to zero and then spawn another food piece. This will ensure that the food piece will start from the spline start point and not from where it was eaten. Also, let's duplicate the spawner so that we have more food spawned along the river. I will adjust the spline points so that the food will navigate the river and not clip through the stones. As you can see, the food is moving along the spline as intended. This system can be used to move all kinds of actors in a level, like a train on rails, cars in a city, a moving platform in a platformer or birds in the sky. The spline has also the option for looping, so you could create closed loops. This is a very powerful system that is very easy to create and use. Remember, splines are a versatile tool for adding movement and flow to your levels. This tutorial is just the beginning. Explore the different options and functionalities to unlock their full potential. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new from this tutorial. If you did, please like and subscribe for more content like this. I appreciate you joining me on this learning journey and a special thanks to everyone who supported this video. Don't forget to leave any questions or recommendations in the comments section below. Your feedback means a lot to me. I'll see you in the next one.